the infrastructure of the current church is it effective now i came up with this question and truth is probably over there like what are you talking about it, I, for me it looks like the four walls of the church is effective in some capacity but i believe that you know when we look at the infrastructure of the the the, the churches in the new testament you think about how they were on pursuit of starting churches and just going out and you know just ministering the gospel that was their whole mission was to go out and send this gospel out into this dying world well mm -hmm. in the process they built churches right that's that's what we're going to do is we're going to build churches but it didn't stop there their main mission their main objective was to go out and to not just birth churches but ultimately spread mm -hmm. the gospel of jesus and i think when i posed this question i think what i was aiming at was is the current state of just the four walls effective still in today's society do we think especially during this pandemic which a lot of us cannot even get to the four walls anymore i, I know in texas it's quite quite a bit different but you know a lot of us you know especially myself in particular with the way my current setup and in infrastructure is set up through higher education we don't have access to the buildings anymore and so um my ministry we cannot go to the four walls we cannot go into the building anymore and so it must be virtual and so i got to thinking about is the current setup of the body of christ still the most effective way of ministering to people um, I know that churches have a lot of outreach programs. I just don't hear of too many pastors, preachers, elders going out and doing that footwork anymore. Um, I do believe that that is the most potent, that is the most effective, as we've seen through Jehovah's Witnesses, as we've seen through Mormons. Footwork is, and for me, still the most impactful way of outreach mm -hmm. and the most impactful way of ministering and um, sharing the gospel um, for this body. Street evangelism, street apologetics, you know, people going out and just simply sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. I found that that's most impactful, but I wanted to throw that question out here because I think, you know, the body yeah. of Christ and the building has done a lot of good. But I don't think it should just sit within the four walls. And I don't think, and I just wanted to throw it out there, you know, and engage people's thoughts. Is the current infrastructure of the church still effective? Man, that's a good question. The simple answer for me is no, because we've changed the definition of what, uh, the, who the church is. And we turned the who of what the church, you know, we turned the who into a what. We don't think about church as a people as much as we do as a place to go. And I think what 2020 showed was that, you know, what can be shaken, what, you know, will and ha was shaken <laughs> for sure when it comes to our four wall church people. And also it showed that like if church was about the four walls of the building for you, then you may not have been where you thought you were with God because it was about the four walls that was more of a pivotal aspect of being a Christian than actually the other things that God calls us to. So church attendance was your big thing more than it was actually serving and worshiping and doing things for God. And that's one of the things that was revealed to me during this time. I actually was having a conversation about this last night. I think, I think we don't, like, especially with like our generation and those younger, actually, it's really not our generation. I think our generation, we're at the very tail end. We're, some of our pe people in our generation are experiencing this too, but especially those that are after us, the four walls just aren't the only way that we can reach people. And what ends up happening with the four walls of the church is it really only helps people on Sunday and maybe a weekday Bible study. But it comes off. A lot of church comes off. And I, this is this is so powerful to me. And when I was talking with Camille about this, but we are only getting people right on one day out of the whole week. And there's six other days, maybe it's two days out of the week, but there's five other days, which we don't really care about a lot of times as ministers and pastors. We do. We say we do, but our actions don't show it because a lot of what we do is geared towards Sunday 
because Sunday is just culturally what we've come to know being the most important day if you're a Christian, if you're a believer. And I think that's where we failed a lot of men and women in this world today is we put so much of a premium on Sunday and people being right with God on Sunday, but not being right with God all throughout the week and really finding ways to help them to get right with God and be and have a make this a lifestyle for them that they can carry throughout their week. We haven't really shown them how to do it, like how to do it and bring it and carry it. And can we sustain them if they like if they're not coming like people that aren't coming to church? Are we going to continue to stay in touch with them when they have nothing? It's not I'm not saying that we, you know, so into people differently that benefit us, but. Can we continue to reach out and communicate with people who don't come to church on a consistent basis? Are we going to really go out of our way to reach out to those people? Or are we going to take it personal that they stop? They haven't come to church in a month and we just take it personal and say, well, they're a lost cause because they're not coming to church consistently. But are we still going to find ways to connect them with the church because the church is a people? And so that's my biggest issue. I don't want to go too long winded on it. But like I think the infrastructure of the church, the infrastructure kind of sucks. In a lot of churches, not all, every denomination, every group does it differently and has a different approach. Some do it better than others. But I think the moment we put, if we continue to put the church in this box and we continue to consider it a what instead of a who, I think we're, I think we're in big trouble. Yeah, I, I think you hit a, a bunch of good points here and you, you're right. People are only getting fed two days out the week. Um, and to one of your other points, you also mentioned how um, some of the leaders within the body of Christ, some of the leaders within ministry can even take it personal at times. Um, I know I have when people don't come back to church because you're thinking to yourself like, look, we only get these two days, you know, three, three days <laughs> if we, you know, we got events and things, you know, we, we strive to do these things. And, and, you know, three days at most here within our ministry where, you know, we get to be with each other. And it's like, look, you know, if you don't come no more and I know that we're doing a great thing within this ministry, it's almost like I take it personal because I'm like, what, mm -hmm. you know, like what happened? And so I, I think if I've gotten to that state and I'm a super, you know, laid back, look, you know, do what you need to do to be fed type of person. I don't, you know, I don't take things personal that often, but when I started feeling that way, I had to re-examine the, the current infrastructure of the church and say, hey, what's going on? Like the building is not this, you know, this is not a gang. This is not a cult. And so I had to get back to street evangelism. Look, um, people don't want to come to our virtual sessions as much anymore. And I, you know, is I get it, you know, is you got to prioritize super a lot. You got to prioritize a bunch. And so, you know, scheduling these things out and doing these things. That, so guess what? We've simply brought the church back. We've gone back to the basics and we have brought the church back to um, the people. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we've been out on the streets, you know, even through COVID, you know, we've adhered to all the guidelines, but we've just, we've, you know, we've kept our distance, but we have brought the church to the streets and it's been amazing. It, it, it had to, it, it was humbling and it, and it brought me back to my senses and knowing that, you know, the four walls isn't the only place. You know, we've got things out here that we can do to edify the body of Christ. And it's not just within the four walls. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, a lot of the leaders in today's society have contained it to just the four walls. Um, and I get it. People work. We've got things that we need to do. And going to church every day may not be ideal for everyone, especially with people with kids and married, you know, got crazy schedules. I get it. But I think if we started looking at the church as more of a lifestyle, if we started looking at our relationship with God as more of a lifestyle and more of an everyday thing instead of a two days out the week kind of thing, um, I think that um, we wouldn't have to have conversations like this because um, the paradigm would have been shifted in such a way to where 
we're striving each and every day to send this gospel out to this world somehow, some way. And, um, and even what we're trying to do here is sending this gospel out somehow, some way, you know, through the virtual platforms. And so um, it's, it's one of these things where I wanted to throw this question out here, engage people's thoughts, because I know a lot of us have become complacent on simply going to church on Sundays. And once we've got that, and here's the thing, here's what it comes with. We go to church on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and then on Sundays, whatever your Bible, so two days out the week. And what happens is we get our spiritual fix and then we go back to doing what we feel is you know good for the flesh because we felt like we got our fix already it's almost like people that fast a lot you know you, you know not everyone but like me for example you know sometimes i'll get off of a fast and i'll just go eat any and everything or before i go into that fast i eat any and everything so that i'm super filled up to the point where when i'm on that fast it's <laughs> yeah, not as to the bad. brim you know what I mean? And the same thing, the same thing is happening with the church. We go get our fix two days out the week and then we run back to the world full throttle. It's like we sprint back to the world full throttle because we know that come Wednesday, we'll get our fix again. Come Sunday, we'll get our fix. And I don't think that's how God designed it. You know, his mm -hmm. soldiers, his, his, his disciples, his apostles, they weren't out here getting their fixes two days out the week and then go running and sprinting back to the world. So... That's real. I think the current infrastructure of the church, it could be effective when, when in the hands of the right people who have a mindset to want to outreach each and every day. I think the Catholic Church even hinted towards, you know, like, like I, I like the idea of keeping the buildings open, right? Like if you've got that particular setup to where you can have your buildings open for people to go into and, you know, I even like the idea of coffee and coffee shops and like, you know, mini libraries or whatever the case may be. Like, if you've got that current setup, like, if you could have your, you know, your buildings open, you know, seven days out of the week, 24 seven, if possible, I love that idea. And I wish somehow, some way we could all get back to that type of, you know, worship and that type of churching. No, nah, I hear you. I, I don't really have much more to add. I think uh, we got to go back to biblical understandings of church infrastructure not saying that we understand that we in america we got it made like we got it made we're rich we're wealthy we're well off a lot of us are the rich young rulers and don't even realize it just because we think we're making you know sixty thousand annually we don't feel like we're rich compared to the millionaires and billionaires but we are some of us are the rich young rulers and we're not willing to sell everything and what that that doesn't mean a lot of people misunderstand that and this actually hit me recently sell everything that you have and give it away really was more so a mindset of being prepared to give you know having a heart to give to people and having a heart to serve even with the things that you have and and not allowing those things to become our idols but i think a lot of times we've made things our idols we've even made not the church being the church our idol but being in a building and worshiping God, kind of like our entertainment, but it's like godly entertainment because of the presence of God and the spirit and the music and all that stuff. We made that another form of our entertainment. And so we go for these experiences, but we don't go for like sustainable change and things like that. And I'm speaking from a place of personal experience where like, OK, am I going to actually retain this message that I got today? Like, am I going to actually live this out? that God put in my heart? Am I actually going there to be changed? And I think we all need to come in with that mentality. Like, Hey, I came here, <laughs> I came for deliverance. Like, you know, I came to actually be changed. I came to be set free. I came to be reminded all of that stuff. I mean, I think the church has the ability to, to do that as a people, but if we get, I think if, if this whole pandemic didn't show us anything, it definitely showed us that we're bigger than any building. And we can we yeah. can be bigger than any building at all times.